Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Michael's Corner, and Happy New Year's to everyone, and what a way to kick off 2021, because I am, because tonight, I'm interviewing a special wrestler tonight, she's happened to be a female wrestler, um, she goes by the name of Ronnie Nicole, or Bang Bang Nicole. So, before I invite her to join my live stream, we gotta do a moment of silence because the wrestling world lost a lot of wrestler, Brody Lee, um, aka. Loop Harper, and I want to take this minute to do a moment of silence. So, please join me in doing a quick moment of silence before I invite my guests here tonight on Michael's Corner. So... Thank you. So now, without a further ado, let's invite our guests for this evening. All right. I can't wait to hear her story on how she got into the wrestling business. So, so, um, can't wait to... There she is. Hi. How you doing? Well, how are you? Can you I'm, hear me okay? doing, I'm doing good. Good. Thank you, you for doing this. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, um, uh, usually on Michael's corner, I ask all the wrestlers. All the hard hitting questions. So I asked them, with you know, how did you get your start in pro wrestling? Um, <clears throat> pro wrestling, I kind of stumbled into long time fan. Um, but it, there's really not a clear cut. Well, at the time that I started, there was not a really clear cut way to get into it so I mm -hmm. kind of stumbled into it by happenstance even though I had been searching for some time at the time that I broke in in the early 2000s there were not a lot of training schools it wasn't like it is now and so there weren't that many places that you could go without having to relocate and for me at that time that was not an option mm -hmm. so because I couldn't relocate it was kind of you know just continuing on the entertainment path that I was on at that time um, I was semi-professional cheerleading, I was acting, I was modeling, um, I was mm -hmm. in the dance group. So there was a lot of things that I was doing that helped with professional wrestling, but I still mm -hmm. just couldn't get my foot in the door. Um, mm -hmm. And so luckily, I stumbled upon a Craigslist ad, which led me to a person who was hoping to start an all-female wrestling promotion in the North Carolina mm -hmm. area. Okay. And so, you know, I started training because I was like, it's this is what I wanted to do, so I definitely was excited to have found the way in. Mm -hmm. And once I started training, I just hit the ground running, and I haven't looked back since. That's wonderful, wonderful story. So, um, I uh, I've seen a lot of of your matches on YouTube. I think in the past. Um, can you? Tell me, what was your favorite match that you had? Honestly, I think my favorite match that I've had in my career thus far was probably one of my worst matches. Um, <laughs> I was in Japan, and I think this was my second tour um, because I lived over there for a total of four years touring mm -hmm. in wrestling. Um, and mm -hmm. it was a huge deal. Like, it was six senpai and myself. And I was mm -hmm. like, are you guys sure you want me in this match? Cause mm -hmm. 
I think there are more qualified people. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, I was super nervous. I was so scared. And that was one of those moments where my nerves definitely superseded my muscle memory and ability. Mm-hmm. And, you know, everything went wrong in the match in front of 2,000 people in Cork and Hall. And mm-hmm. it was honestly really terrible. But also mm-hmm. one of my best and fondest experiences there because even though I completely shit the bed, well, <laughs> Excuse me, but all of the the senpai and the senior members were so cool and so understanding of the experience and what was happening to me at that time. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll always take that with me because, you know, unfortunately here in the States, I haven't had that type of veteran action, but definitely Mm -hmm. abroad, I definitely felt that, you know, understanding and definite care and concern and patience given from mm-hmm. the senpai to so high, especially in big circumstances like that. So mm-hmm. a lot of things went wrong. Um, that's actually the match I blew my knee out, but mm-hmm. it was also one of the best experiences I've had in terms of feeling supported, even at a time when I didn't do my best and I didn't perform my best and things mm-hmm. didn't go off the best. So. Okay. All right. So, um, so my next question to you is, um, so you went in, you went to Japan, right, to wrestle, right? Can you tell, tell us, um, what was like wrestling in Japan? And, um, you have the flu, you know, because, Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, because I want to, because, uh, I know very little of you, and that's the reason why um, I just want to ask you that question of what what was the experience like in Japan, you know, wrestling? Um, my experience in Japan wrestling was probably one of the foundations of my career and what really has driven my path thus far. Um, the training style let alone from the culture and it being a different country, but the training style, um, the work ethic, the business model, the way that professional wrestling is treated, um, the seriousness in which the craft is taken, all of those things really have always driven my love and my passion for Japanese wrestling. And that has always been my dream and my aspiration is to, is to build a, a stable career there. Um, but being there was just, it was such a surreal and wonderful experience, not without its challenges for sure, but also definitely something that built me as a athlete, built me as a professional, and built me as an entertainer. Because again, the things that they hold so dear there factor and filter into every part of their lives and lifestyle. And it's really wonderful to really be immersed in the culture and in the business in such a way that it stretches you and grows you and challenges you. And it's exciting. Um, It's something that I I love and I feel very grateful and blessed to have experienced, especially the way the world is now. You know, we're living in the corona era. It's very Mm -hmm. hard to travel. We have to be very safe Mm -hmm. with those things. And, you know, being able to do international travel is a gift. And I feel very fortunate Mm -hmm. to have, you know, gone all the places I've gone and, you know, Japan will always be my second home just because I was so well received there. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe in a place where I had not been before. There was a show in Osaka that I had actually was replacing Sari, who actually is going to WWE. Um, mm-hmm. She originally was in my home company, World Women Pro Wrestling Vienna. Mm-hmm. And she had, had an injury in her collarbone. And so I was replacing her in the tag team match. Okay. And after, um, there were people at the merch table waiting for me. And I was in the back of the school where coming and saying, Nicole, you know, you have people at the table. And I was so shocked because I'd never performed in Osaka before. You know, I'm just mm-hmm. some chick from America. And it was really humbling and gratifying at the same time to experience that because mm-hmm. their wrestling is so respected. And if you take this craft seriously and if you perform at a high level, then people do respond to you. And I feel very grateful that I have mm-hmm. this wonderful experience. It was definitely a culture shock, a lot of hard work, you know. Um, (laughs) 
I definitely called home every single day the first few months because the challenges of training versus the American Cell training was something mm-hmm. I had not ever experienced before. So mm-hmm. it was definitely eye opening and challenging. And I feel very grateful to have gone through what I call the crucible of Japan because it definitely turns you into a different athlete, you know, especially when you've been over there for some time. Mm-hmm. That's wonderful story. That is so wonderful. Um, thank you for sharing that story. I'm sure like everybody's gonna watch this and um, hear your story, you know, and um, and whatnot. So now my next question to you is, um, you know, I I interview all these guys, you know, and I get all the guys' perspectives. But I would love to hear a woman's perspective. I just want to I just want to ask you this: What do you think of women's wrestling now, as prepared to the two thousands and the night, the nineties and the eighties and whatnot? So, what do you think about women's wrestling today? Um, women's wrestling today in comparison to the styles of the past is obviously much more evolved and it's obviously grown so much more in its reception of others. But in my opinion, women's wrestling has always been a constant. There have always been those women who have operated by a certain standard and a certain professionalism that has not always been respected. And it's very Mm -hmm. important to understand that while mainstream acceptance and understanding of what professional wrestling in regards to women is now, this is something that has existed since the Georgia Brown and Lily Thomas, May Young and Lula. So the history of professional women's wrestling isn't something that is new. It's something that has existed concurrently, but in the shadow of the men of our male counterparts. Um, I do think that from the even 60s, 70s, and 80s um, to now, we have witnessed some real change and some real acceleration of understanding of the female athlete and it being on par with, again, our male counterparts. I love to see how the women's tag team divisions are starting to grow, how women are holding championships for longer times, and women who are qualified for these championships are also being exalted and, and put on platforms. That's the type of stuff that really warms my heart and makes me happy to see things that are moving in the direction that they've always been moving, but for whatever reason, it's at a slower pace. But women in professional wrestling, that's something that has always existed, just, just in the shadows and you know, just off to the side, because while women were booked in gimmick matches at the beginning mm-hmm. of professional wrestling, women have always been a significant draw and always been a vital part of the professional wrestling community. And it is just really heartening to see that now the major companies are starting to put that into the formula that is success of of their particular programming. So it is wonderful and heartening to see. I'm glad to have been, you know, a part of this revolution that has been going on, like I said, for quite some time. Um, you know, I'm kind of older in the game, not new, but not old, all the way as a typical veteran, but seeing the changes from when I started to there not being women to women who are, you know, taking off and soaring and really taking the business to the next level, to the women who are the constant building blocks of the business, to the women who are making those drastic changes in the business with their own promotions, and, you know, their own mm-hmm. customers. All of these things are new and wonderful to see. And so I think it speaks to the change in the culture around professional wrestling as well as how women are viewed. Thank you. Um, so um, my next question to you is, if it was up to you, which wrestler would you want to face like when, um, when everything settles down? Who would you like to face? You know, I know that she's on her um, 
retirement tour right now, but I would love the opportunity to face Jazz. She's actually someone who I look up to, you know, coming up through the business and coming into professional wrestling and learning about it. Especially as a woman of color, she represents a lot of the things and a lot of the struggles and challenges that I myself have had to face in different ways. And I know that her experience would help my experience. I know that the match would be something, you know, to really go down in the record books and just the opportunity to share a ring with her. You know, I've had the opportunity to share a ring with a lot of the people I've admired for so long in Japan, mm -hmm. but here in the States, you know, I'm still kind of low on the list of those who are, I don't, haven't filled out my list of those who I really admire over here, and mm -hmm. it's just, it was really an honor to, to share the ring with her before she, you know, moved on to teaching and leading the next generation at, at the dojo there in Texas. Mm -hmm. I would actually love to see that match if it, if, you know, because with technology these days, you know, you can see you, there's YouTube and all of these platforms. If I just would like to see that match, and if that match comes to fruition, it should be it should be it should be face either Facebook Live or or YouTube Live because. I'll be sitting there watching, watching that match before. Uh huh. And um, I have a lot of respect of women's wrestling. Like you said, it has really involved. Now we got. Now they got the women's tag team titles. I, I'm telling you. I'm just saying. It's 2021, and every. I said this to a friend of mine that women are getting so many opportunities now. Not just in sports, but in general, you know. Pe women are being um, construction workers, a janitor. Oh my God. Some woman's being a GM of a grocery store. Um, it's just that I just, this, Women's getting so many opportunities now, and I'm just completely happy that because back in the day, women didn't get as much opportunities as to prepare now. So, I just want to bring that out, you know. So All right. Well, <laughs> my uh, my next question to you is: If you wasn't re if you're not wrestling right now, what would you be doing right now? If you let's just say like you call it quits, what would you be doing right now if you wasn't doing this? <clears throat> I think probably in the climate of today, um, I would be trying to help in some way, you know, mm -hmm. uh, with the housing disparity, economic disparity, wage disparity that goes on in our world, especially in our communities of color. I think it's important to facilitate and give back and help as much as you can. So if I wasn't a professional wrestler, I don't know if I'd be a social activist, but I definitely think I would be someone who would be very involved in social services and making awareness in the community um, a high priority um, because it's needed and it's important. And, you know, as the world changes, we've all got to kind of join hands and walk together into the fire. And so I think I would be what I would enjoy if I was not in the entertainment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, um, I don't want to waste any more of your time and whatnot. Thank you so much but, for having me. This so much yeah, fun. because, you know, um, I've been wanting to interview a female wrestler for so long, you know. I just want, I just want to, because I know you don't know me, you know, 
you just began to know me and whatnot. And um, and I've been interviewing a lot of wrestlers for the past seven years. And Michael Corner has been such a success, you know, because I asked all the hard-hitting questions. I, I'm trying, you know, you know, make Michael's Corner more fun and exciting and give you the chance to tell your story, you know, because, you know, after all these wrestlers who I interviewed, um, they like what I do, you know, especially during the pandemic, you know, because there's no wrestling shows. There's nothing else for the wrestlers to do. So I said to myself, what the heck? I'm going to do Michael's Corner. I'm going to interview these wrestlers. So then that way, you guys at least have something to do, you know? Yeah, so... Okay. Yeah. Big shout out to all your fans. You guys can follow me at Glitterlicious Bang Bang on Instagram, at Glitterlicious mm -hmm. on Twitter. My YouTube is Ronnie Nicole. My Snapchat is Ronnie Nicole R. Also, make sure you check me out on Liking. Search Ronnie Nicole. Thank you so much, Michael, for having me. And yeah, well, you're very uh, welcome. And you're welcome to join me any anytime you want a better interview. You know, please let me know. And we'll do this again, all right? Thank you all so right. much. Yeah, bye. Have a good night. Yep. What a nice, nice woman she is. Ryan Nicole, oh my God, such a sweetheart. Um, I, I enjoyed that interview with her, you know. So, um... You guys, you guys can follow me on social media. Um, Facebook will be Michael Mo. Um, that's my Facebook fan page. And my YouTube channel will be is uh, Michael's Wrestling Channel. Okay? And don't forget that next Thursday, next Thursday night at 7 p.m. around this time, um, I will be interviewing Van Johnson. Oh, my God. I am dying to interview him again. And I am going to have him retell his story about how he got into the wrestling business. So, okay, you guys. Well, you take care. And um, I'll see you guys next week on another edition of Michael's Corner.